What's up guys, Sam Antini here, and today I'm gonna to show you guys how to edit GoPro hockey videos. Move, move. I'm editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. However, everything I'm gonna show you can be used in every editing software. This is just the core fundamentals on how to edit GoPro hockey videos. So the first thing you wanna do is import your footage. Then once it's imported, you're gonna drag it onto a timeline. Once your footage is on the timeline, you wanna scrub through it and find all your saves, goals for, and goals against. This usually takes me about an hour to do. Once you're done, you'll have a timeline that looks something like this. Now the next step is very important if you want your videos to stand out. This is when you adjust the color to make it pop. So instead of manually correcting the color every single time, I created two presets that I can use in every one of my videos. So I created one for the camera behind the net, which is the GoPro Hero 4, and then I created another one for my GoPro session. This saves me time and always ensures that the footage looks the same. The one thing I like to do is remove the audio from the GoPro behind the net. This is because I don't need it and it's usually really loud or it peaks a lot, so I get rid of that audio. Then because I make so many of these videos, I just keep using one project file as a template. So what I have to do is replace all the footage from the previous game with the new footage. Then I delete the music, the sound effects, and the scoreboard stats from the previous game. I do leave the first portion of the scoreboard as well as the zeros, and the period number one. Then using a pre-made list of numbers, I add in all the shots, goals for, and goals against throughout the game. Once I'm done adding all the stats, I now go back and I cut between camera angles because sometimes you can see the play way better from behind the net, but then other times you can't really see that I made the save or there's something going on in front that I really wanna show you guys. So this is when I go in and make the decisions on when I should show the behind the net footage or the helmet cam. So once you're done going through all your footage, this is what your timeline should look like. So the next thing that I do is drag over the scoreboard and all the stats. This is so that you can see the scoreboard and the numbers throughout the entire game. Now the next thing you wanna do is delete the scoreboard and stats from all the helmet cam footage. The reason you wanna do this is so that you can see as much as possible through that angle. You don't need the scoreboard at those moments, especially because you're usually gonna use that footage just to highlight either a save or a brief second in the game. So once you're done with the scoreboard graphics, the next thing you wanna do is add music. Now there are a lot of great places online to get music that you can pay for, or a great alternative is the YouTube Audio Library. They got tons of great music on there that you can use for free that you can also monetize in your videos. Now once you find your song, you just wanna drag it in, but an important part isn't just to drag it in and leave it. What you wanna actually do is go in and adjust the level so that it's not too loud, because if the music's too loud or too low, it will either annoy people or they won't even hear it so it won't even matter that you put it in. Especially if you're gonna be using the music to control the mood of the video. For example, in some of my more intense games, I'll use faster paced music because I want you to feel the intensity that I felt while playing. What's up guys? All right, another game here. The other team only has six players, so that's gonna be interesting. So once you're done that, guys, you can go and add the final touches. For example, if you have an online store that you wanna promote, you can go and take a screenshot of the website and you can use keyframes to move it. So here you see me scrolling down so that you can see the entire website. Those keyframes are gonna allow you to add motion to your photos. So another thing that I like to add is a game stats and a season stats graphic. And the reason I like to do that is so that you guys can see how I'm doing in my season, as well as what my totals were for that game. Now I like doing this through Photoshop because all I have to do is open up the original file, make the changes, and then just by saving it, it automatically saves it in Premiere. Then once it's done, I put a little wipe transition to make it come to life. Then I speak to the camera a little bit about the game, and then I usually end the games with this graphic, just showing you guys maybe my most recent video or a recommended video, and I always end the video with my logo. Thanks. All right guys, so that's the video. I hope you liked it, and if you learned something and want more of these, hit that like button so that I know. Now, if I went over something too quickly or I didn't even talk about it, 
Let me know in the comments if there's something specific that you want to learn and if there's enough of you guys asking, I'll definitely make a video about that. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and if you haven't yet, go check out tpshgoalie.com for all your puck stops here merch like shirts, hoodies, iPhone cases, mugs, whatever. It's all there. I just placed my first order. I'm going to get a hat, I'm going to get a mug, an iPhone case, I'm going to get a sweater, a shirt, a bunch of stuff. So go check it out if you haven't already. And thank you guys, I truly appreciate your support. I'll see you in the next video.